State aid has always been an important part of EU policy. But in recent months and years, the term has been used more often. So what do we mean by state aid? Why is it important in the EU? And why is it becoming even more important? Let's take a closer look. Under state aid, we classify all kinds of financial assistance that governments provide to companies, for example, subsidies or special tax deals. Now, what's so special about this? Doesn't every state do this in some form? Yes, normally, but in the EU, things are complicated. As the EU is a single market, meaning that products can be traded across national borders without any administrative hurdles, subsidies in one member state can have consequences for all other member states. If, for example, Germany wanted to support its car industry by dishing out subsidies, France would be under pressure to do the same. Because if France does not follow suit, the French car companies would either be crushed by German competition or move to Germany themselves to benefit from the subsidies. So France, of course, would dish out subsidies as well. And so would Italy and the Czech Republic and every other country that tries to keep the car industry at home. This would lead to a subsidy race with no winners, except maybe the shareholders of car companies. Moreover, a subsidy race would benefit the rich countries that can afford to dish out more subsidies than other countries. The less rich countries would have to protect their companies by putting up barriers to trade like tariffs or complex administrative requirements. But, of course, this would not be a single market anymore. That is why, for all countries to agree to join a single market without trade barriers, you have to agree on some fair play rules regarding state aid. And because the EU single market was designed and implemented in the 1980s and 90s, when everything seemed inefficient and all kinds of state interventions into the market fell out of fashion, the EU basically decided to prohibit state aid. Of course, there are some exceptions, but in general, as soon as state aid threatens to distort competition in the single market, it cannot be allowed. Now, however, we are not in the 1990s anymore. We see that some problems will not be solved by free market competition alone, and state support is needed. When Covid hit in 2020 and many companies were threatened, the EU Commission temporarily loosened state aid rules so that member states could support their companies. When Russia's aggression in Ukraine triggered an energy crisis in the EU, the Commission adapted the temporary exceptions to the state aid rules and prolonged them. And last summer, the US passed the Inflation Reduction Act that subsidizes the US industry to become more climate friendly. Especially electric vehicles and batteries are being subsidized, but only if they are produced in North America. This set the alarm bells ringing in the EU, especially in Germany and France. Both worry about their future as car producers and would therefore like to have even more possibilities to support their industries. Earlier this year, the EU Commission announced its intention to loosen the state aid rules even more to ensure that companies stay in Europe. But the Commission's competition chief, Margrethe Vestager, also cautioned that there were risks of distortions in the single market. In a letter to EU finance ministers, she showed that France and Germany together spent 77% of all state aid that was paid out by all member states under the current temporary exemptions. A further loosening of state aid rules could make the situation even more unequal. That is why many smaller or financially less powerful countries are highly skeptical of the proposal. But they are in a dilemma. On the one hand, if the EU industry really is in danger of losing out to the US, this does not help anybody in the EU. But on the other hand, if you open the floodgates of state aid to save the EU industry, you run the risk of destroying the single market, which is the EU's most precious asset. There would be a solution, however. In theory, at least, you could spend the industry subsidies on a European level. Like this, you could keep up with the US subsidies without risking a counterproductive subsidy race within the EU. Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has talked of a European sovereignty fund that might potentially take over this role. 
but the Commission has not given any details on this yet, and many countries also dislike this idea because it would strengthen the Commission here in Brussels. So that's the state aid dilemma the EU is currently caught up in. EU leaders will discuss this issue when they meet in Brussels at the end of March, and we'll see whether they can find a way out.